Welcome back to Real Community Talks. I'm your host, Felicia De Silva, and on today's episode, wow. we have my guy, <laughs> the creator, the original, the visionary behind RCT <laughs> himself, <laughs> Matthew De Silva. You're done, no. Matt, thanks for being here today. Glad to be here. Thanks, Felicia. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a great opportunity. It's so weird to be on this side of, well, actually, on this side of the camera, actually, because for those of you who don't know me, I'm Matthew's older wiser sister and i'm wow. usually over there behind that camera so it's nice to step out of the shadows and into the light wow, today wow, wow. Of course you have the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> so for the two ways people who don't know who matthew is two hey ways people. hey congrats but for everyone else who doesn't know wow. matthew is are you ready for this the creator visionary producer uh, editor uh. and publicist for the podcast real community yeah. talks yeah. is right. a self-proclaimed batman fanboy you already know Holds an honors Bachelor of Arts in Criminology Whoa. and pol Political Science with a minor in Canadian Studies. Tell him. As well as a master's in Public Policy, Admin, and mm. Law. Ought to be your boss. Was the second best scooter rider in the world after me, of course. Yep. Was the Youth Engagement oh, Coordinator at the Malton Community Center for the City of Mississauga. Mm -hmm. Worked as Fastest Big Mac Maker and Burger Flipper. You already flipper know five seconds. At our local McDonald's. Five seconds. Volunteered as peer mediator at his high school lincoln alexander was a peer leader with the now program mm. did community outreach with safe city mississauga mm. served as a board member and co-chair of the malton community mm -hmm. festival for four years currently serves as youth leader and events coordinator at our local church suffers from middle child syndrome wow <laughs> <laughs> Runs four successful social media accounts, including Faith Through It All, M. De Silva Photography, and of course, Real Community Talks. Is Dollar Beard Club's best customer. No, 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 it's not. I changed to Elegance Canada. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Dollar Beard Club, it's all right. Is a passionate community advocate. Is an outspoken opposer of cheese. Wow, of course. Winner of both the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship and the Congress of Black mm. Women Scholarship. Looks like the love child of DJ Khaled Drake wow. and Thanos. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> but only when he gets his lineup. Wow. Is a motivational speaker. Shout out Frosty Fades. So motivational, in fact, that he never stops talking. <laughs> and among all of these things, he's a son, uh, a brother, okay. a pet lover, all right. a friend, uh, a cousin, yeah. a nephew, uh, a grandson, okay. a brother in law, yeah. an entrepreneur. Okay. A kuch kuch hota hai expert. Ah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's copy kushi copy come. Never mind. And an all around nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> was that accurate? Um, You missed up. Oh, I'm joking. That was pretty accurate. Good job. <laughs> Let's give her a hand. Thank you very I, I much. Insert uh, fake clapping hand. Yes, as I said, I've been in the trenches and behind the scenes of this podcast since day one of RCT. I was here <laughs> when, it was, when it was envisioned, when Shout it was out. born. So it's nice to be on this side of the camera. So let me just say that it's an honor to be your first official guest host of RCT. Mm -hmm. So seeing as you're in the hot seat today, let's get this ball rolling. Oh it's going to be a long one today. So for those of you at home, why don't you go ahead and grab a snack? And Matthew, it's time to give the people what they've been waiting for. Starting with what is your origin story? Who is Matthew De Silva? Um, well, before my origin story probably would have been something like, Oh, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a youth worker, blah, blah, blah. Like, who is Matthew De Silva? Um, but more so lately, I've been learning to come to, um, to terms with my identity, that my identity is not about what I do. My identity is not about, um, you know, if I'm a boyfriend or, um, you know, if I'm this great professional, my identity is that I'm a child of God, that I'm redeemed, that I'm loved, um, that I'm chosen, all that kind of stuff. Everything the Bible says about who I am, that's who I am. Um, in terms of origin story, um, uh, Toronto, uh, born in Toronto, St. Joseph's Hospital. Um, there's no baby pictures from when I was born from the hospital. Felicia has one. My brother, Josh, has one and my sister. Uh, I have no pictures out when I came out the womb. So I don't even know if I really was born in St. Joseph. Maybe <laughs> mom's lying to me. Uh, but grew up in Toronto till grade four. You know, Carlton Village Day shout outs. Um, shout outs to like the 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 i don't even know if they were japanese korean or chinese but the the asian hookups on the on the playground would buy like the noodles and the and the the seasoning packets and uh would literally just have like it would literally be like the 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 noodle cartel of like the 
there was also like um, I don't know if you remember GIMP. It was like that little string that yeah, I yeah, used yeah. to like string together and make all these like braided designs. Or like those little jelly pockets where you would like peel the thing back. Yo, I almost choked on those. So, so a many kid times. actually, I think choked on that. Rest yeah. In peace. Um, but uh, yeah, Carlton Village days. Then uh, our parents were like we're gonna move to Saga because our next door neighbors were crack addicts, and we're like okay, we we'll move to Saga, move to Malton. Shout out to Malton, been here since my grade five days. Uh, went through to Ridgewood Public School, went to Morningstar Middle School, went to Lincoln, um, been working. I, I, I've been working at the community center that I used to get kicked out of when I was a kid um, for trying to be smart with the librarians. Now I'm kicking out the kids. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> yeah, worked there, did my master's, did my undergrad at U of T, um, and just been lately trying to um, really see where God has me. Um, recently quit my full-time job just to kind of take a break from seven years of post-secondary education. Wow. Um, and just trying to relax and chill because the thing about me is I always like to go to the next big thing instead of just striding. There's this message from one of my favorite pastors named Mike Todd. He says that their goal for their church this year is not to strive, but to stride. And to instead of always trying to go up and up and glory to glory, it's like, just, keep going. just enjoy where I am. Like, I'm this kind of person where I was getting like big positions and people were noticing me and politicians and all this kind of stuff. And I got to my head and now I'm just like enjoying going to work, coming home, playing PS4, being with my family and chilling with my dog and not worrying about accolades, just enjoying. So. Speaking about being with your family, do you miss me since I moved out because I got married? You live in Brampton. You're not that far. <laughs> and I see you at I'll, church on I'll Sunday. I'll never rep Brampton. Let me just say, I'm so sorry. I'm She's a, a Brampton team. I'm a Bramptonian, but I'll oh never rep Brampton. Gosh. I'll always oh rep Malton. No, I so, guess I guess I, I guess I missed the I guess I missed like the the you're the only one that gets like my inside jokes but I guess that's why we still maintain the DM mm-hmm. on Instagram. Right? That's true, and there's lots of inside jokes I have yeah. planned for you oh today. My gosh. So speaking of repping Malton, before we rep Malton, we grew up in Toronto in mm-hmm. the '90s, Davenport and Saint Clair for life. Shout out. Speaking of the good old days, what's your most treasured childhood memory, and why do you think it means so much to you? <sighs> treasured childhood memory, in Toronto. Mm-hmm. Living in Toronto. Mm. I mean, I think, I think like, uh, um, there's a few like when when Beyblades was like really big. Oh, um, my cousin Shane, shout out Shane, he gave me like this illegal medal. It was like it was like this big, um, and <laughs> usually the medals were like this small. Sorry if you if you're listening on audio, the medal was like I don't know the size of like a bagel as opposed to like. Uh, like a cracker that thing could do some damage and like we would like literally battle on like the the slides in in the playground and i mean no one knew it was illegal so i was just killing kids like let it rip and just (laughs) killing kids everywhere and just winning their beyblades and then then some kids got petty and they were older and they didn't want to give me their beyblades so then i'm just like okay i'm not gonna i'm just gonna step back but um that was a cool memory Um, and i think it was banned at our school if i'm not mistaken because people would pull the rip cord and it would like go in people's eyes yeah 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 it got pretty Um, aggressive that was that was a that was a good memory I mean, all of the Carlton Village memories were good memories. Like when um, I told on you because you went to Mitchie's and <laughs> I'll still never yeah, forgive you, you, you were, for that. Our mom never let us leave the school property, but she went to this like fried chicken and like poutine place. It was called it. Mitchie's, by the yeah. way. Mitchie's, right? That's yeah. what I said. Yeah. Um, and then I guess the other one is the one I said at her wedding was the being the best scooter riders in the world. We both just got our scooters. And I'm just like, Felicia, we're like the best scooter riders in the whole world. So yeah, the Toronto days were good as much as as much as like. Our, our parents wanted to move us out to Saga for like to kind of be in a better neighborhood. Um, I mean, we it was it, it, it was it was it was some good times and um, like some of our formative years there and, you know, going to Avos on the weekends to sleep mm-hmm. and going to square one was like the biggest thing in our life. Um, but yeah, um, that, those are some good times. Life was much simpler back then. For it sure. was. It was. And speaking of you wanted to be a million and one things when you mm. grew up. So tell us about some of those big dreams and aspirations you had. And are they the same today? <laughs> or do you have a different dream job now? Mm. Um, so growing up, I, w- I wanted to be a number of things. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I can say it in chronological order, but um, I got into baseball really quick when I was young. My dad got me into baseball. Um, didn't play it until I was about middle school, grade eight. Actually, no, grade seven, I think. Um, but uh, I wanted to be a baseball player. So I go to my mom. I'm like, you know, uh, you know, uh, we got to go down to the. I got to go out in the states. That's where baseball is at, and blah blah blah. blah. Um, and she's like, yeah, but you got to make sure you have your education. And I'm like, yeah, but if I'm making millions, who cares about education? Want to be a baseball player? Then I'm like, okay, I realize that you either need money, um, 
your dad needs to be white. No, I'm joking. My dad's already white. <laughs> um, you need to like know someone of like a big association. You have to go down to like the states and get scouted. And I mean, you have to be really good. And I'm not saying that I I was a horrible player. I was a pretty good player, but I don't know that I was invested in it that much. Um, you also wanted to be. Uh, I jotted a few down actually. Police officer at one point. Yeah. You wanted to be a JAG lawyer. Uh huh. You know what was that guy's name from the show? Harm Rab. Yeah. You also wanted to be mayor mm-hmm. of mississauga yeah Sorry, i wanted i wanted to be an electrician because my uncle pat was like making good money and i'm like ah he has an xbox so that's because he's an electrician right so like i like i would, we would go over to auntie and uncle pat's house and i'd be like i'd see like their nice their nice stuff and i'm like man he must it must pay good and then i'm like oh and i always thought like uncle pat was like the coolest when i was young yeah. uncle pat was like the coolest guy i knew like i wanted his lifestyle and like you have to be good at math to be an electrician i know and i wasn't and i tried like i would look at like all these different courses and i'm like it's not me but yeah i wanted to be a police officer you also wanted to be sailor moon back in the day wow wow so a okay. little bit of a backstory <laughs> so there's this funny story that we love to share in our family about the time when uh matthew loved sailor moon wow so he took a piece of uh, scotch tape and he taped it across his head oh, and he jumped from i don't know the stairs or the couch wow. or something he probably hurt himself really bad but he used to shout i'm sailor moon and jump around the house so wow. i think that was his first career aspiration. she told me she would roast me this whole podcast yeah i don't think sailor moon pays that well though <laughs> <clears throat> so uh changing gears a little bit um, one thing that a lot of your viewers and fans, uh, when they submitted questions and inquiries, they want to talk a little bit more about your faith mm-hmm. and uh, they want to talk about your journey in faith. So how did you come to know God and what role does faith play in your life right mm-hmm. now? Well, just practically, I came to know God because my mom would never let me stay home, at, like not go to church on a Sunday. Um, I think uh, if it weren't for my parents um, kind of instilling those like the core tenets of our faith and even just physically bringing us to OPC. I don't know if I'd be a Christian today. Maybe someone sure. would have would have impacted my life or I would have watched a YouTube sermon. I don't know. But I, I attribute that a lot to my parents. Um, and then being there, being with community. I think the biggest thing about belonging to a community is, uh, sorry, I, I think the biggest thing about um, a belief in something is a community who also shares those same mm-hmm. beliefs. People will mobilize uh, around anything if they have people that will support them and validate their opinions, right? So growing up as kids, you know, I was the only boy in the youth group. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, just being being around our friends and, and just being around that community, going to like High Park for the church picnics. Oh, I miss those days. You know, the corner will start Earl Bales. Like that was family. Like we would go to Sunday service. We, would, we used to have two services. Go to grandma's Back house after eat curry. Like it was, it was a, a full, day. it was a full experience. So it's like I kind of got attracted to that community. And then, um, to be honest, when a lot of people say, "Why is my faith so strong?" Um, that really had to do a lot with um, me knowing about God, but then really having to to realize that God was all I had left after um, multiple relationships and breakups that kind of just put me in a bad place. Um, a lot of who I was and my identity was based off of my relationship with girls and and um from middle school grade eight all the way till like mid university i was in a relationship at least every year um and i mean when you're in high school everyone's like oh, okay they have a boyfriend girlfriend so you want to do the same kind of thing but i didn't choose people intentionally i chose people because friends pressure and i chose mm-hmm. people because maybe their looks i chose people or because they're cute or something and, and 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 let me let me warn young people men women boys girls when you spend enough time with someone, you start to intimately get attracted to them. Mm-hmm. No matter if they're like your perfect looking person or whatever, you start opening up your heart to people. You're going to think that that person's for you mm-hmm. instead. Like I'm not saying, you know, it's it, hard not to catch feelings. It's, how, it's hard not to catch feelings and not be attracted to someone if they're starting to agree with what you say. Right. So that's a lot of reasons why I got into relationships. It put me in a hole. I was in a relationship for about four years, getting serious, thought I was going to marry this person. And then, you know, we parted ways and I was broken. I didn't think I would. I thought I thought I'd be like, oh, okay, this is closure now, blah, blah, blah. And then I just got crushed. I'm just like. Because you almost felt like your identity was in that person. Yeah. And um, I, I always say it's unfortunate that God was the last the last thing I had. Mm. But the thing is, I, it changed my perspective because God was always in the midst. He was always silently saying, Matthew, I love you. You don't need validation from this person. You don't need to find your identity in this person. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. I want to live my life. Um, and to be honest, a lot of a lot of um, a lot of my faith got re like like re sparked based on the conventions we went to. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And again, it's being around a bunch of young young believers who are sharing, you know, some of the similar beliefs and just wanting to grow closer to God and challenging you. And sometimes the good thing about those events is they're away from your familiarity. Mm-hmm. They you take you out of the city. You know, you could lift up your hands. Sometimes you're scared to do that mm-hmm. in your home church. But it was nice because I got to just spend some time away and really dedicate my life to God. And I felt like God has just been calling me ever since. Mm-hmm. Um, I think God's always had a plan for my life and I'm just starting to realize that more now. So the reason I my relationship is strong with God is because he's shown himself real to me. Like he's filled all of the voids and the gaps in my life that I tried to fill with people and things. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, it's not that I don't wrestle with God sometimes. It's not that I don't argue with God sometimes. Me and God have our uh you know our our bouts but um he's been the one constant thing in my life and hasn't failed me yet so Mm -hmm. that's why my faith is so strong and do you have some advice for the baby christian the seasoned Mm -hmm. christian on how you personally nurture your relationship with god i think the thing is if like a lot of people will go like oh you know they're the reason they're acting like this, like you remember that video I sent you where the guy's like, he's like, shoot me twice. He's like, bro, he just came out of Bible study twice. Like, you know, I'm sorry. He's like, nah, God's got me. You shoot me twice. And I'm like, all right. like you laugh at that. You're like, ah, oh, the baby Christian's on fire. But to be honest, sometimes we can learn a lot for the baby Christians mm-hmm. because sometimes in your walk, you get complacent and you're just like, you know, it's um, like refreshing to see someone so excited. Yeah. And you can't, what is that Bible verse? You can't pour new wine and old wine skins mm-hmm. right and sometimes you need to be renewed and refreshed and transformed by the renewing of your mind um no but i mean i think when you're when you take this walk of christianity and you take that pledge you're submitting to being a constant student of christ mm-hmm. you're not going to ever arrive or you're not going to be perfect but you strive towards the mark and you always have something to grow like if you think about if you write down on a piece of paper everything that you need to get right in your life you can take a whole year on each yeah. one of those things or six months, right? Mm-hmm. It depends how long, you know, you dedicate to it. So I'm constantly growing. Like what were my problems when I was 15 to 20 to now? They're different, mm-hmm. right? What I, like five years ago, what was I stressing about? You know, getting into... Um, Your master's. Sorry, sorry. Seven years ago, I was stressing into getting into my master's, right? Five years ago, uh, two years ago, I was stressing about getting into my master's. You know, um, a few years ago, I was stressing about getting my G license. Mm-hmm. So it's like, You have to think about it like this, like um, you can't have anxiety over every little thing because you're always going to have challenges in your life. But um, I just suggest to anyone like you just have to the Christian life is 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 hard because it goes against the very fabric of what this world and society tells us. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like the life that I'm living, like I'm I'm building up something bigger than myself. I'm, I'm submitting myself to something that's bigger than me because I fail myself a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah. And is that something that you find that helps keep you on track with everything that you have going on? Uh, Definitely. Like, I I think um, there's a lot of times where I just wanted to, you know, just be like, God, I can't can't live like the way you want. I can't live to the standard that you're calling me to live. Mm -hmm. Um, But it checks me. Like, and and, and that's the Holy Spirit. And if you're, uh, you know, not, 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 if it's foreign to you, if you're not a Christian, like, it's just, you know, god's guidance and his his him leading you towards you know a yes or a no and a lot of times i'm about to do something and god's like yeah but should you really do that right it's like that jiminy cricket in your head right and um yeah like one person um sorry there was this incident once and um these people told me like um they're like okay you know thanks matt like we really see that you're the guy that you talk about or you show yourself to be on real community talks because my whole goal with the show is not just to not just to have super dope conversations with people but i want to show even christians how a christian like myself Mm -hmm. can sit down with a non-believer or even just a random person and just be like hey wow your your story is amazing you know i love you as a person Mm -hmm. let's conversate right and and i want to more implicitly show how i live my life rather than just say how i live my life right sometimes that's the best testimony yeah so i think the real question that was most requested from your viewers was about real community talks itself what was the light bulb moment that inspired you to create it and what are the some what are some of the challenges that what are some of the challenges and learning experiences that you encountered along the way um there's a few reasons why i wanted to start real community talks um one when i was doing my masters at york university i started um I mean, I took, I didn't take the highway way. I just took steels all the way down from Malton. Um, but I had about 45 to 50 minutes just driving. 
there and back and I'd go to I'd go to work from 11 to 5 30 then go to school from 7 p.m to 10 p.m and I, and I'm like my whole day's washed just because I'm working mm-hmm. and then I mean yeah I'm at school learning but um no personal time for myself um and a lot of a, a thing about me is um I constantly like to to learn and I like to grow and I like to mm-hmm. um just retain information so I just started listening to podcasts I uh, it started with me watching a lot of YouTube pastors and sermons and stuff like that. Um, I got onto this guy named Gary V. Yeah, okay, he swears a lot. Christians, okay, whatever, whatever. Um, but just a great business mind, uh, just a great entrepreneur mind, and um, just started taking in some of uh, his stuff. Um, found um, found some of the stuff really helpful, and then I just I listened to it, and and I was gaining knowledge while I was driving and hacking my time. He always talks about hacking your time. Like sometimes I'll sit down in the car and I'll edit. Um, those times when you're just sitting down on your phone on Instagram, you could be doing something mm-hmm. else. Um, and just started doing that because I love music, but the thing is I'm not always downloading music. Shout out to Spotify for helping me out, <laughs> but um, it gets redundant. You play the same old songs, yeah. you know, you pretend you're in a music video driving, you look out the window, you play your little R&B, whatever, whatever. The rain's you know, falling. You know, say goodbye by Chris Brown, and then it's like it gets redundant. So I'm like, okay, let me gain let me gain some knowledge that I actually mm-hmm. want to learn, right? Um, so did that, Good and... And then I started listening to some podcasts. Like I started listening to um, uh, Western Roads. Uh, shout out Western Road Pentecostal Church. I started listening to the Church Community Podcast. Started listening to their their sermon podcast. I said this is great for a church to be doing. Um, listen to Gary V stuff. Listen to you know Elevation Church's podcast. Um, and then when I like, wow, this is good. Like this is amazing because the thing about um, what people maybe fail to realize is that audio is starting to dominate because Mm -hmm. now you can tell your phone like Siri turn off my lights and this and that right and people are are wanting more than just superficial videos they want to just hear like just bars sometimes right and they're getting into that that scene and podcasting's been blowing up so I'm like you know what like that'd be cool if I could do that but I just kind of left it like that right and then as my as my role as a youth worker I started sitting down with youth at a table like this circle table Mm -hmm. in my lobby and kids are just telling me like you know, um, I want to move out and this and that. And then I'm just like, all right, let's do a pros and cons list. You move out. Wait, who taught you about that pros and cons list? Mom, mom. So let's do a pros and cons list, right? So what's the pros of you moving out? All right, you get to get away from your annoying parents. You know, um, you got your own independence, blah, blah, blah. What are the cons? And a lot of times the cons list will be a lot Mm -hmm. bigger. Like every piece of toilet paper, um is gonna be expensive i learned that from mom i um, actually am learning that right yeah. now having just moved out like a month and i'm like Man, your bills compile right I didn't realize um I spend money let's on say that. you get a thousand dollars uh in every two weeks rent sometimes is minimum two thousand mm-hmm. dollars so your whole paycheck there's gone how are you gonna pay for groceries so mm-hmm. those conversations with youth and even some of them the more confidential stuff that i can't talk about about them like talking about you know wanting to kill themselves and wanting to do all that kind of stuff i'm like imagine if someone was recording us and we're just having this natural conversation the youth that don't normally come to approach me because they're scared if they heard another youth come and talk to me about that Mm -hmm. it could change their whole life it could change their whole perspective and one thing i want to say about social media is yes it's a double-edged sword social media can be used to mobilize to hurt people and it can be uh, there can be a lot of negativity and comparison traps online but instead of judging kids for being on there I always say, why don't we meet them where they are and invade mm-hmm. their space and do something positive? Um, because you go on CP24 today, it's all negativity. I hate mm-hmm. watching CP24 watch today um, because it's all drama. It's all deaths. It's all, oh, this person Sadness. divorced this person. And, you know, uh, we're in debt as a government. Like, OK, I'm not trying to avoid realities, but um, I, I just wanted something that could just teach people and be positive and and. Um, I seen a lot of podcasts started posting on Instagram, like little clips of the podcast. I'm like, this really motivates me. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing that really set me off, um, I attended, um, I attended like a like an addictions meeting for a family member of mine. And um, at at that meeting, um, an individual was talking about if it weren't for this group that they would have committed suicide. Wow. And I'm like, this this story is so powerful. Imagine if two other people who were having suicidal thoughts heard that story. All they need to do is just hear it, listen to it. And you know what? Maybe it could have saved them. Mm-hmm. Right. And I said, the amount of people I can serve and I can speak to in an, in a group, you know, let's say it's, I, I speak to a group of 20 youth, right? Imagine you take that same message, you put it on YouTube and it goes viral and you get 2 million views. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not saying all of them are going to be, you can uh, reach you know, a wider audience, you reach a wider audience. So then I'm just like, you know what? Um, whenever you know me, whenever I get addicted to something or like I get passionate you get about something, about I get obsessive and I do my research and then it's like, 
I do everything and I buy everything that I need to do it. Yeah. Photography, I bought all the stuff I needed to do. Yeah. This, Started from the ground up. What? And then the thing is, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to start this podcast, what it's going to be about. So I'm like, you know what? The world needs, it doesn't need fakeness online. It needs real talks. Like mm -hmm. everyone knows that phrase, you know, like real talks, this real talks, that whatever. And then I'm like, okay, but I can't use real talks and I can't use like, like I always thought Ted talks was a good thing, you know, like, um, so I'm like, how can I do something like that where it's talks and it's real, but it, it, it involves a piece of me. And I'm like, well, who am I? Everyone always says I'm this community guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, real talk community, real community talks. And I'm like, and then, like okay, the light bulb, went the off light bulb moment head. came up in my head and I'm like, real community talks, RCT, boom. Welcome to real community talks. The moment I thought of that, I hit up my boy Amrin, uh, Amrin Omade and I'm like, bro, I have this idea for a podcast. I need to see if you can make a logo for me. So um, check out his page on Instagram. I'll, I'll link him probably like right here or whatever. Um, but yeah, he made it for me and I'm like, okay, this is real to me. Then I bought all my equipment. I'm like, if I don't buy my equipment, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, um, uh, I'm going to tap out and I'm not even going to actually do it. Bought all my equipment. It's expensive. You had to use it. It's expensive. I mean, I was working a full-time job then and it was Christmas time and packages I got some Amazon gift day. cards, packages coming every day, like little things from the mic to the headphones to everything you see here. Um, but I had to buy it because if I didn't buy it, I wouldn't have committed. Bought all the stuff. First, first time I was testing my equipment, I sat down with my brother, Josh. Um, and then I sat down with my dad and then I recorded my mom and my sister literally just gossiping about something that day. Hey. Um, but yeah, I did it and I'm like, okay, now let me see how to make questions. And you know what? Everything I learned about how to podcast, I Googled, I sought help from people. I looked at examples like the E project, uh, shout out mm -hmm. Jody Ann Beckford, one of the dopest, uh, podcasts in the city like seeing how she did it kind of gave me a lot of inspiration the church community podcast from spencer and and pastor john at weston and i'm like there's nothing stopping me from from doing it i can do it i don't care about the the numbers or whatever i just care about my impact even mm -hmm. if it impacts one person so i did it first episode with john mitchell i don't even know what i was doing i put some questions on a word document and we talked mm -hmm. and Ever since then, we just did 26 episodes for season one. I'm the 27th episode now, and that's where we've been. We started at May, um, May, May 2018. We launched, um, and today we just hit 6,241 downloads. Um, wow. We've hit 15 countries worldwide. Um, we have over 50,000 watch time minutes on YouTube wow. with over like 7,000 views um and so yeah. i take back my comment from the beginning about the two ways pizza <laughs> um and even on instagram like instagram i believe has like about 20 like probably over forty thousand views on the different videos i'm i don't know i'm just making up a number you guys don't actually go fact check me <clears> and then <throat> prove me wrong but oh my gosh scandal instagram's the biggest like where the biggest reach for our community is right now and that's where we've been so uh, i i wanted to start this podcast to really just showcase oh that's another reason the final reason and i'll and I'll, I'll let you go to your next question Another reason why I really wanted to start the show was that there are amazing people doing dope things in Malton. And Malton always gets crapped. Well, that was my next question. So yeah. you just go ahead. Okay. Malton always gets crapped on because we've had a few shootings here and there. Um, you know, people have gotten robbed, stabbed. But let's be honest, that happens everywhere. Like I heard a few a few years ago, some guy ran in with a gun in Square One, and Square One's supposed to be like uh an up 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 family up, friendly, up, you know, whatever kind of place, right? Um, so this stuff happens everywhere. And, and a lot of the times there were isolated incidents, but people started saying, Oh, you go to Lincoln or you go to Malton in a negative <clears throat> way. Yeah. Like, it, like, like Malton and, and has a bad rap, you know, like people say like it's Jane and Finch and you know what? Shout out to Jane and Finch. Maybe Jane and Finch has great people and great things. And I'm sure they do, mm -hmm. but one little incident or 10 incidents here can give you a bad rap. So, um, Miss Saga news posted this article that said Malton Mississauga's waistline. And when I read that, I'm like, I got cheese. I'm like, nah, that's that's not what it is. Like, we're a close community. Like, the same people you'll see at school, you'll see at the grocery store, Very you know, like community, wherever, actually. right? And that's every single job I've had, except um, um, when I worked once at Sherwood Garden, has been in Malton. I worked in McDonald's at Malton. I worked at Etobicoke General as a security. Um, I worked at Malton Community Center, and then I worked at, um, yeah, like in two roles in Malton Community Center. And my goal was to to just pour back into this community that poured change into me. Change the stigma. Change the stigma and say that this is a great place. And um, not all my guests are from Malton. Everyone asked me that. 
Um, but I want to show people that maybe by the world standards, micro level influencers who are doing big things like my, my boy, Chris, I thought of him first. He is an amazing youth worker, super shy guy, uh, you know, doesn't always have uh he's not really outspoken, but he has an amazing story and he does amazing things for the community, but he doesn't have, you know, TMZ or CP24 following him around showing what he's doing. Um, he just humbly does what he does and he serves and he loves helping the people. Um, so that was my goal just to, just to showcase people like that, um, to give them a platform and to see that it's not just the celebrities. It's not mm -hmm. just these kind of people. Like when you have a big issue in your life, you're not going to go to Kim Kardashian's Twitter. You're going to go to mom. You're going to go to, you know, your friends. You're going to go mm -hmm. to Jonathan. Right. So those same people like Chris, like Jonathan, like some other people like Kara who've been on this show. I want to show people the people who've impacted my life. And I also, uh, a lot of people ask who I, how I choose my guests for my mm -hmm. show. Um, I just watch people from the sidelines and unless if I don't know you personally, I watch you. Um, for instance, one of my, one of my boys, uh, that came on the show, Harmon, Harmon, um, I didn't know him personally, but I watched his positive, uh, footprint on social media. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to get that guy on. He reached out to me first and with every person that reaches out to me, I'm not trying to be like mm -hmm. dry. I'm just, you I have, have to, to do your research. I have to curate who I have on my show. And, and if you're going to be on the show, it's, you know, you're spreading positivity. You're doing something impactful. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to all you rappers who, you know, want to talk about money and doing girls and all that kind of stuff. That's not what this show you can about. go on the breakfast club. That's not what the show is about. Yeah. Um, let me put that out there now. But, um, yeah, that's how I, that's how I choose. I, 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 I watch for people and then I reach out to them or they reach out to me and I confirm it. So if I haven't got you on the show yet, um, I could still consider, but, um, I choose my guests just so I can kind of flow what's coming in. Cause it's a lot of work. Yeah. I was doing this podcast working full time for the city of Mississauga, 35 hours a week. I was, um, going to school, um, uh, for about 10 hours a week. I was serving at church, running this podcast on top of my other personal commitments. So mm -hmm. it's not an easy thing. So I'm not just going to put anyone. I want to be able to put someone who I know that their story is going to impact people. But if you could and you had like, you know, don't worry about like how you would connect with them, but like your dream influencer, specifically influencer guest, who's your dream influencer guest on this show? Mike Todd. Like I think um, Mike Todd of Transformation Church, his ability to connect with the world beyond just from a church setting is powerful. Like not just cause he's funny and he dresses dope and he has good examples. Like I even seen someone today was posting um, a non-Christian on Facebook. It's funny that funny that I saw that today was posting a Mike Todd sermon and they're like, Oh, I needed to see this. I needed to hear this, wow. whatever. And I'm like, I'm not trying to say like, he's going to be a Jehovah witness and he's going to come to your door and be like, Oh, sorry, Jehovah witness. But he's going to be like, he's going to be like, he's going to be like, boom, boom, boom. We want you to go to heaven and kind of be that abrasive. He's not in your face. He's not in your face, but he's just like, God he's loves relatable. you, but he's relatable. Right. And, um, yeah, I would just love to have him on. He's, he's just such a dope person. He, and that's another thing. Like he was doing amazing things, maybe considered a micro level influencer until he came onto social media and the world was like, where was, where's this guy been? It's like, mm -hmm. he's been there, mm -hmm. but now there's a platform. It's like, what I want people to know is that if you haven't popped off on Instagram and have a million followers, it doesn't mean you're not doing great things. Your impact, don't equate your impact um, with the size of your followers or the amount of or reach you have online or your income or all that kind of stuff. Like if you be faithful for where you, where you are and you serve people and you impact where you are, people are going to notice and the word's going to spread. But that's not the point about it. It's, it's about worrying about one life before you start worrying about a million lives, right? Mm-hmm. So for those who, much like you, watched podcasts and you got inspired by some of those bigger podcasts who had kind of paved the way for you, for those of your viewers who are watching right now and they want to start a podcast, um, can you make a sustainable income from podcasting? Mm. And what is some of your advice to those who maybe want to start a podcast of their own? Again, through research, um, I found a few things on YouTube. Um, you can make a sustainable income from podcasting, but maybe not right away. If you are a business and you are, um, I always suggest to businesses, if you're a business, you should have a podcast and you'd be like, why would I need a podcast? Because you're creating an outlet for your customers to engage with your content mm -hmm. beyond just what they're buying from you. Right. So, um, for instance, um, like the breakfast club was a radio station. Let's say they're a business. They started doing a podcast and you know, they're getting more views because they're getting different reach. The mm -hmm. show hot ones has a podcast. Now, I love how even though people really want to watch it visually, mm -hmm. you know, I actually just side note. I just watched uh, an episode of hot ones 
uh, with Vanessa Hudgens. And oh, I, yeah, yeah. I love that show and I want to be on that show so bad. I so know. if I could be on a show, I wouldn't want to be on Hot Ones because I, wanna... I love to talk and I want to eat chicken wings and I love spicy food. I That's like my inspiration. I want to do an episode once where we do Hot Ones. Maybe we'll do it for your episode. <laughs> Hopefully we don't um, get copyrighted. I know, right? Um, <laughs> no, but um, you can make a sustainable income for podcasting. Really, the income um, is coming from a few sources. So if you do sponsorship or brand deals, mm -hmm. so like... The one thing that you guys don't get in this podcast is me pausing to be like, this episode is sponsored by whatever, right? Because it's kind of nice, though. It is, it is, but um, you know, um, I mean, if if somebody wants to sponsor us, like, hey, yeah, what's up? like, like, um, but uh, the thing too is is uh, it has to be based off of a certain amount of downloads. Like, if it's Nike, they're not gonna come and sponsor me if I'm not at least making a million downloads. What about Alibaba's, Alibaba's, yo, Alibaba's, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I, if you're not making a certain amount of downloads per month, you have to have metrics. And that's why I've been tracking my metrics and just being a podcaster is great, but being a good, um, all around type of person where you can know the marketing, you can know the metrics, you can know, um, like the, the production of the show. It mm -hmm. makes like, I do all of this by myself beyond like my, my family who helps me record technically, like I had to learn all this myself and I had to do all this myself. So, um, you can't make an income that way. You can make an income from, um, maybe your show being produced by someone else like there's ways like that I, I do put this on youtube but the thing is now because of that whole jake paul thing i think i think uh mm. they made it harder for creators now so I, I can't make any ad revenue until um i think at least have uh, a thousand subscribers and uh i think it's like it's a crazy amount of watch i think time. it's like forty thousand watch hours or something or a thousand or ten thousand watch hours or something like that so, I mean, I'm working my way there. Um, no, I'm not getting paid for this podcast, but I love doing it. And um, there's been some opportunities. Uh, radio station reached out to me to put my show on there, but it wasn't more so sponsored. It was more like I'd, I'd pay for airtime. So I think right now I just have to keep marketing myself and um, um, I could make money in the future, but that's that's a longer term goal. And I mean, it could happen tomorrow. It could happen two years from now. Mm -hmm. But um, even some of the like a lot of the YouTubers and things that I watch they'll tell you that you you're not going to make an income sometimes in the first one year or two years or even years. three years five years you kind of have to put in the work those ones that you see making those millions of dollars like like i don't know like shane dawson or some of those other kind of big influencers that have been around for 10 years they've been putting in the work since youtube was in its infancy so yeah um, and they're just like they're crazy rich now but like you're gonna have to put in the work you're gonna have to be patient you're not gonna see revenue overnight yeah 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 and um that's the thing too like podcasting might not be the main source of income but it can be a gateway to income mm -hmm. so because of my podcast someone can be like hey i want to hire you to be a host for this event mm -hmm. right like this is um i think um people who um want to have uh, like jobs like content creators or entrepreneurs or whatever you have to have a a, a positive online footprint and a proven track record yeah. so maybe this podcast will never make me money but maybe someone will pick up the show in the future and be like hey i want to pay you to be a host on my show or i want um i want you to come on this show or be a, a whatever right so there's multiple ways that you can make it um but for me this is more like i'm doing my impact i'm having my impact um with the show but it can open up possibilities in the future right mm -hmm. So another thing that one of your viewers wanted to know is transitioning to a life where you're in front of the camera, making yourself vulnerable to your viewers, things like that. Did you ever or do you ever feel a sense of insecurity or lack of confidence? And if so, how did you overcome it? Wow, I just burp, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, every time I get on the podcast and I have a new guest, especially if it's someone who I've only met on social media, like when I first started, I'm like... <sighs> Like I'm so nervous and that that long intro where I'm speaking about like all the person's stuff and then the person just amps me up. It just gets me amped. <laughs> but yeah, I'm always nervous going into it. Like I can't even lie. I think you, you it gets better with time. There's some podcasts who are already at episode 100. I'm only at episode 26. I think they say with the podcast, if you don't make it past 10 episodes, like if if you get to 10 episodes and you've you made it. You should be good like you know mm -hmm. you keep going but for you me i know your routine but for then. me i want to at least make it to 50 or 100 that's kind of my goal right um but yeah i get i i feel sometimes i used to feel so insecure because i mean you know i'm a bigger guy i'm on camera the camera adds 10 pounds i don't even know if that's a fact but um i feel like it's a fact i feel like how you look on camera is not how you look in person or at least how you think you look in the mirror right um but yeah i can say all those kind of things but um I was, you know, I'm like, maybe I'm not going to be as, as confident or maybe I'll sound geeky. And you know what? I always tell my guests, when you come on, 
forget that there's cameras here. I imagine we're just sitting, having coffee, having a conversation. And I think that kind of keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sometimes I can look at all this equipment and it scares me. But I think one of the one of the best things about this show is that it's in my living room, right? Because mm -hmm. some of the most powerful conversations and the most intimate times have been in this living room yeah. with my family. So, like, maybe if I was in a studio and there was, like, some more heavy equipment, I don't know, maybe I'd be a bit ner more nervous. But, you know, me and mom have our three-hour talks here, like, almost every night. So, this is yeah. normal for me. Like, this is my comfortable space, right? So. Mm -hmm. so, seeing as you've taken both the traditional roots of education and work and the more unconventional path of social media passions, do you feel you've been successful and how do you f define success for yourself? Hmm. Um, I mean, I... I can tell you how I used to define success mm -hmm. in just starting. I used to define success by like metrics. Like, okay, if I was impacting 2,000 people because I got 2,000 downloads or if I had 2,000 followers or um, all of these people validated me, right? My validation was based on people instead of um, kind of being happy with what I did. Yeah. And I feel like being successful, like there's some, there are, like, let's be honest, there are some fields and some, things in life where metrics are required to gauge success, right? To gauge if you've done a good job, right? Um, obviously in school, they use a marking system to see mm -hmm. if you got an A or whatever, right? But even even with that, it doesn't necessarily mean you're always successful because if someone can come out of university, a straight A student and gets no job out of that, right? So yeah. um, I think success for me is being able to be um, content with what I've done and who I am. like. Um, me doing this podcast, I feel confident doing it. I feel enjoyment and fulfillment um, by what I get to learn from guests. And to me, that's being successful. To me, that's like um, being comfortable with who I am, not worrying about if I'm making money or all these kind of things. Like that, that's that's um, success to me. And um, for me, I always in my life try to challenge myself. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it was, okay, can I do my master's? Mm -hmm. Done. My master's is done. Can I do a podcast? Okay, I'm pretty decent at doing a podcast, right? Um, I always try to expand my limits to see that, hey, it's not always so complicated like people make it seem out yeah. in the world. I bought some equipment. I had some conversations. I had some ideas. There's a podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's another thing for success for me is proving to myself that I can do it. Mm -hmm. Even if people don't watch always watch it or don't always agree i can say to myself that i challenged myself i did it and i'm proud of me so that's that's success mm -hmm. and how many episodes do you have now under your belt uh 26 26 so that wraps up season one basically so mm -hmm. do you have plans for season two what's yeah. your plans for rct's future in the next one year two year five yeah. years so um i'm actually taking a bit of a break from rct from um christmas time to maybe sometime in the spring um as i mentioned before it is it is really difficult to podcast like i have to do all the scheduling and i have to record it myself and editing is probably one of the hardest parts yeah. of doing all the back work and work on the on the internet um so i need to take a bit of a mental break because um i feel like lately i've been creating out of a physical emotional and spiritual deficit mm. um and i can still create but it's not the creation that i'm 100 percent satisfied with mm -hmm. um so I need a I need a bit of a creative creative vacation just to have some headspace and focus in on me. I need to start taking better care of myself. I think after my master's finished, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna watch Netflix every day now, but I need yeah. to get myself structured again. And part of that is just taking a break from the podcast. So I do have plans for season two. I do have plans to continue on this podcast. Um, I do also plan to, even though I'm gonna be taking that break, to maybe not do guest episodes, but maybe post like a, a five, 10, maybe 15 minute mm -hmm. short video of like maybe talking about like trusting the process or why I left my full-time job. I know you guys have been asking me, I will be making that job, uh, that video. I just need to take care of me right now. And, and, and I love you guys and thank you for your support, but I need to take a break from that. Um, other than that, um, I do plan in the future. There's some things that I wanna do like a live panel event like I want to get like a bunch of former guests, like how they do it, like in Comic Con, and just people ask questions, <laughs> kind of stuff like that. Um, I do have plans to uh, to do panel episodes where like it could be like a roundtable, and we're just talking about you know racism relationships or relationships or, or you know um, being an entrepreneur, right? Um, so that my my plan started with interviewing people, but I think it's going to develop into something that 
community is not just two people. Community Mm -hmm. is a village. Community is people you don't always agree with. Like, I don't want to just put people who I always agree with on the show. Sometimes um, I'd like to put different positions because sometimes the only way to grow, the Bible says iron sharpens iron, Mm -hmm. right? So you have to have people who are different with you to kind of sharpen you, Mm -hmm. right? Um, A pencil and a sharpener are two different items. But the the sharpener sharpens the pencil. They both serve a function, wow. um, but they do different things, right? So sometimes you need people who are different in opinion, different in skill set, different in values to kind of flesh out who you are mm-hmm. and to understand who you are. So I do want to have some of those episodes. And um, do you think yeah. having a, a team in the future, like a like a, a, a f- actual dedicated like camera person or mm. editor, or all these things, or do you think you could ever? Because I know you, you're a perfectionist and obsession obsessive. Do you think you yeah. could ever step away from editing or things like that? I think I could if I found someone who, um, one of two things, would be able to replicate my vision and style, or could even make it better. Right? Okay, um, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I. I Trust me, like if you wanna if you wanna help out with real community talks, I am looking to in the future maybe hire some interns, or maybe just do volunteering. Like I won't be able to pay people just because I'm not even working that. Yeah. Like I'm. I t- You're not earning an income. I'm not. I'm show. not earning an income, and I'm not even working that much anymore. Just pursuing some different things in my life right now. Um. But if you would like to come, I can give you volunteer hours, experience. I'll give you credits on the credits. I will, you know, help grow you as uh, someone who maybe wants to learn videography or wants to learn podcasting. I'm always down for that. Some kids have reached out to me, some of my youth, so I might actually take them up on that offer. Um, if I could make this into a production where it was financially sustainable, 100%. I would love to just come sit down here and do the show um, and not have to worry about if the camera's recording or if the audio levels are mm-hmm. great. Um, but right now, I'm putting in the work and maybe in the future mm-hmm. it'll pay off. So, And if your channel grows and like, you know, you know, maybe you'll forget about us little people and things wow. like that. But like, um, if your channel grows, do you ever think you're gonna like change your format, or do you think you're always gonna keep RCT with his humble beginnings? Uh, no, I I think like definitely season two, I'm gonna come up with different rapid fire questions. I might like I wanna look at all 27, including my episode 27 episodes. Look at how I did it. Look at things that worked. Look at things that didn't. Um, one thing that um when I teach people social media is like find your theme. Find what works and find what doesn't. But you need a, a, a data set to be able to yeah. do that, right? So now I have all these episodes. I can see maybe people, like what's the audience retention? Right now I think my audience retention is seven minutes even though they're um, the, ask the average audience retention, right? So maybe in the future what I'll have to do is I'll post a full episode for those keeners who really want to watch it. But maybe I'll do like um, five-minute breaks where it's just about a specific topic we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And then I'll also post that to YouTube. So if someone can only digest five minutes, Okay, here's your five mm-hmm. minute piece of content. So I'm always looking to prove, uh, improve, and you guys have seen different improvements, like adding different things to my episodes. So I'm I'm always willing to grow. So it's something I need to sit down and kind of just look back at. So going back to some of the things that you we talked about, like different podcasts and people and things that have inspired you. Um, there are a lot of people, myself included, and, and lots of the viewers who have been inspired through the deep dive conversations you guys have here on the show. But uh, you must also draw your inspiration for somewhere. So if you had to pick a quote that inspires you, what would you pick and why? Mm. I was uh, off camera. I was trying to think of something like I have a few different quotes. Like I love Ralph Waldo Emerson. Obviously, I love a lot of scripture. Um, But something that kind of stood out to me in this kind of um, a little bit where I'm at right now is that excellence requires discomfort from T.D. Jakes. Um, And what I mean by that is like you um, you envision yourself being successful however your whatever success means to you and accomplishing certain things but a lot of people don't like going against the grain to get there Mm -hmm. right they want just a smooth sail and it's just gonna happen the easy way out like i'm sorry but things in life aren't always handed to you sometimes you have to put in the time you have to put in the effort and sacrifice like i was telling this um uh she's gonna be happy when i say this um shout outs to pearl i was telling this girl uh pearl that i work with um I actually researched like I'm like wow I don't really know much people named Pearl so I researched what <clears throat> Pearl like how a Pearl is made right and I think they're made from like what clams or something like that yeah. um and a Pearl is made or oysters or oysters whatever 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 that whatever that sea creature is how a Pearl is made and Pearls are expensive right um they're they're there's sediments or all these kind of like different minerals or something inside the animal and it it gets agitated. So it starts like scraping these things out and then all of this agitation creates this beautiful thing, which is a pearl. Right. I I, I just say that to her because she's annoying. So that's why 
she's the agitation <laughs> but no I, but i mean like that 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 discomfort created something beautiful mm -hmm. so if you want to create something beautiful or you want to see something happen you're gonna have to go through a season of discomfort because one yes um it's part of the sacrifice but two you'll be able to value more what you have because you've been in a place of deficit you've been in a place of 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 need you've been in a place of you know some down times that you can actually appreciate that right so, and anything you want hard enough you're gonna work for you gotta it. work for it, yeah yeah so one last question before we get into the rapid fire <clears throat> mm. something that i'm sure lots of our guests would love to know i remember matthew back in the day well we're only two years apart so i remember his whole life basically but if you could go back in time to grade nine matthew right on the cusp of high school like you're about to walk into lincoln alexander rocking the ponytail and the high-pitched voice wow. and the pants and the sock wow. <laughs> what would you say to matthew um surround yourself with better people stop putting your identity in your relationships mm -hmm. save your money from mcdonald's when you were yes. 15 don't buy pandora bracelets for your future girlfriends um, unless she's wifey then that's yeah different. unless she's wifey even if she's wifey, it's expensive. Um, <laughs> focus more on you as an individual mm -hmm. instead of defining who you are based on exterior things. Um, get more serious with and intentional with what you want to do. Like I mm -hmm. felt like even going into criminology and political sciences, while I do believe that even though I feel like I might have made some, some um, uh, choices that I may not be living out today in terms of my education and careers, I do feel like yes, they 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 benefit me, and I've I've actually been able to learn who I was because I learned I didn't want to do those things. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I, I should have been more intentional and not just follow stuff because of the hype or because everyone else is doing it or because I want to go to a school where my friends are at. Like, I, I mean, it comes with age, it comes mm -hmm. with maturity, and you make, get to know who you are and what you yeah. want out of life as you go through those mistakes. Sadly, and, sometimes. And I think one of the biggest things is listen to your mom, like absolutely your mom your mom has good advice and everything that i used to be bitter about because of what she said i always used to think like she just wants to ruin my life she wants to shelter me and she wants to be like a mama lion and always protect me it was for a good reason mm -hmm. and, and i'm here standing today because both of my parents love me and took care of me so shout yeah. out to mom and dad shout out to mom and dad all right, this is the part I've been most excited for. <laughs> I was planning these for the last couple of days. Let's um, go. Got some advice from certain people, but I think I got a nice list here. We've reached the point in the show where we do rapid fire. Yeah. <clears throat> Loyal RCT fans already know how the game goes. I'm going to ask a series of questions where you must answer quickly or with the first thing that comes to your mind. Boom, boom. Are you ready? Yes, let's go. Pepsi or Coke? Coke. Marvel or DC? DC only because Batman has a contingency plan for the whole Justice League, so you would have a contingency plan for all Marvel characters, but you can't beat the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, me or Josh? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I just remain neutral. Um, I'm only loyal to who resides in this household anymore, so you don't. Wow, <laughs> but who's helping you with this episode, though? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite car? Uh, a Skyline R30, a R32 Skyline or R34 or GTR. Though. Which parent are you most like? Mom. That was an easy one. What's your favorite beard oil? Uh, I used to be a Dollar Beard Club guy, but now I'm Elegance. Thanks to Frosty Face for putting me on Elegance Canada. All right. Killmonger or Thanos? Ooh. I knew you'd like that one. Killmonger soundtrack. Um, but Thanos is just one of the, like, you actually, f I don't know. Um, I was watching a video on, like, um, uh, how what makes a good villain and thanos and killmonger both made a good villain because you actually could resonate with and him. i knew those are your two favorite villains yes, so yes i mean thanos just because he just he's just he's just like big and strong he's just cool and he has a bald head like me basically he's like purple dad yeah sort purple of. dad basically yeah all right favorite brands anything any kind of favorite brand uh nike air force ones will always be my favorite shoe um apple even though i buy into the 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 marketing and the you know, Androids always always have better equipment. I just buy into that marketing. I could I can When are you I gonna make the switch over? Never. Um what else? What else? What else? What else? PlayStation? I don't know. I I'm not a huge person. Like I don't go buy like I won't go to like true religion and buy jeans. I'll just go to old navy and just mm -hmm. get some. Like I don't care. Like I, for me, clothes isn't a big thing, but shoes is a big thing. So I'd say Nike and That's true. Nike and if Apple. anyone steps on his shoes he gets Yeah. Yeah. All right. Favorite cartoon or T V show growing up? 
Ooh. I mean, every Batman animated series um, and the, like, like the Spider-Man animated series. I like that. I, I like that bunch. Like I loved Recess. I loved Hey Arnold. Um, anything Family Channel or Channel 25. Like Tele- Proud uh, Family. Proud Family. Yeah. That was like, a good show. I don't know. TV shows aren't the same today. All right. Superpower you'd want most to have. Mm. Your show is already edited. Uh, regeneration. Like how? Regeneration. Like Wolverine? <laughs> My show's already edited. Uh, regeneration <laughs> like Wolverine. <laughs> Uh, just so like you can literally go into any situation and if anyone just like shoots you or like stabs you, you're just like, all right, so what? I heal. <laughs> okay, here's a throwback. Tonka or Hot Wheels? Ooh, Hot Wheels. All right. Sailor Moon or Sailor Mars? Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Yankees or Mississauga Majors? Ooh, Yankees. Ponytail or Bald Head? Bald Head. Song that puts you in your feelings. Mario, let me know you. That's just how I feel. When- Teenage okay. Fever. All right. Uh, most influential person in your life? Hmm. I mean, if I don't say Jesus, would I like... Well, there's another person who said, if you don't say them, they're going to be so mad. I mean, I have to be honest. It's my mom. Like, (laughs) my mom, my mom's, uh... Like, she thinks, like, me, we're really alike, so... They really are. Yeah. Um, what's one meal you actually know how to cook? Lasagna. Have you ever made lasagna for me? No. Okay, well... I don't know what you're, what you're waiting you for. Move out of the house. <clears throat> you don't get those purposes. Uh, two items that you'd take with you on a deserted island. Oh, the, uh, the like t- automatically what I take with me is my phone and my wallet. But if I was on a deserted island and I know I was going to go, like, I don't know if you'd ever know that you'd be going on a deserted island. Uh, yeah, my phone and... Milo. Milo, yeah. Yeah, I'd probably <laughs> take Milo too. I mean, I'm, I'm so sorry. I mean, my husband... <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jonathan. Ooh, shade, shade. Uh, 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 Portuguese food or Guyanese food? Portuguese food made by my Guyanese mom. Oh, that's good. I'm joking. Guyanese food is pretty good, too. Michael Scott or Dwight Schrute? Michael Scott. Michael Todd or Stephen Furtick? Michael Todd. What job would you be horrible at? Um, Anything with math. Okay. Like an accountant or... Best beard grooming tip, like one tip. Um, you need to take care of your beard just like you take care of your, your hair. So if you shampoo and condition your hair, you gotta shampoo and condition your beard. You gotta put beard oil. You gotta put vitamins in it. You gotta take care of the hair like it's a grass, like it's a garden. So, all right. Would you rather give up meat or social media? Social media. Like I'll be honest, guys. Like I I love having an impact online. But if it weren't for the podcast and marketing the podcast, I would delete all my social media accounts. I don't really care for it much anymore. Like I think people can have a positive impact, but I mean, bacon is like bacon one of the is best life. Things. I know, basically. <laughs> okay, York U or UTM? Uh UTM. All right. When is the episode with Milo coming? Uh sometime soon. I need to take a break, but I'll put it out soon. All right. Curry chicken or chicken curry? Chicken curry. And if you say curry chicken, <laughs> we have different theologies and I don't know that we could be a community. <laughs> Nonprofit or private sector? Nonprofit. That was mom's idea, by wow. the way. <laughs> okay, this one was my idea. Who is your favorite Batman actor? Christian Bale. Okay. If you could sit down and interview any person, dead or alive, who would that be? Besides Jesus? Um... Huh. that's a good question um i got a few like i'd want to interview gandhi i think i'd want to interview um nelson mandela um yeah all right and finally if your life was a book what would the current I chapter be called the current chapter of my life right now if my life was a book um hmm following a non-traditional pathway all right all right so <clears throat> that was actually good I, I i i i threw in some throwbacks in there i'm like what would make matthew laugh because like you know nobody can make matthew laugh like me let's just wow. be honest all right <clears throat> <laughs> so now we've reached guest corner <clears throat> this is the chance for you to shout out any of your social medias wow. your projects your businesses or since everybody already knows who you are because obviously they're watching your show uh give a final piece of encouragement to your viewers um shout outs to um everyone who checks out the show you guys are amazing people shout outs to everyone who doesn't check out the show 
you need to start checking it out. No, I'm joking. You just do your thing. Um, and if you don't have time to it because you're so busy um, learning who you are, that's even better. I'd rather you learn who you are than watch my show. Um, shout outs to my family who, if they weren't here, wouldn't be, this show wouldn't be possible. Um, not even just because I grew up in this family and they taught me a lot of things, but physically they've helped me. My parents have let me use this living room. Um, my sister and my brother have helped me record. Um, they've been patient with me. So, um, you know, I, I couldn't do this podcast without them. And I mean, just their support in my life in general. Um, shout outs to my church family, OPC, everyone there who supported me over the years. Um, shout outs to everyone um, who I've been learning from as of lately. PQ and PK, your leadership and mentorship is valuable. It's, it's invaluable. Um, it's something that the world can't provide. And I'm so blessed to have you two in my life. Um, shout outs to, uh, shout outs to, um, um, you know, all the people I still, uh, connect with these days, you know, whether you've been from high school or if you've been from like when I played baseball or whatever, like shout out to people who support me, shout out to all of my guests who've been on the show. You guys have made the show mm -hmm. what it was. Um, shout outs to my sister who's hosting my episode. Um, thank you for that. Um, shout outs to God because, um, doesn't matter about anyone that I just said. God is the one who's really kept me grounded, right. who created me, and who um, has made me who I am. So shout out to God for even when I was his foe, uh, he still fought for me. So wow. I like shout that. out to Reckless Love. All right. So that about wraps up this very long-awaited episode of RCT. You already know how to find Matthew. All of his social media links are in the description. As for me, you can follow me on Instagram for makeup, <laughs> beauty, lifestyle related content if that's your thing. <laughs> My handle is just at Felicia Fatima. All right. So <clears throat> one last thing before we close. Now it's my turn to give you right. your word of encouragement. You know, I was sitting la sitting down um, in my room last night with my husband and I'm like, what should I write to Matthew? And like Loki got a little emotional, <laughs> but like my makeup is too expensive to cry. So wow. I'm not going to cry. I'm just going to say what I say from the heart. <clears throat> Ready for this? Yes. All right. Matthew, even though you're my little brother, I look up to you in a big way. The way you made your dreams come true is an inspiration. The amount of things that you have your hands in is enough to make my head explode. Even preparing for this episode as the host really put into perspective how much research and heart goes into just one episode. Your passion for your community is a breath of fresh air and your capacity to make even a stranger feel like family is incredible. Mm. You are funny, intelligent, witty, resourceful, entertaining, annoying, and a handful. Say it louder for the people <laughs> in the back. And if I have kids one day that turn out to be like their uncle Matthew, I know that I'll, I've done a great job. Keep fearlessly and relentlessly pursuing your passions with the same fire you did when you started. Mm -hmm. And I pray that God continues to bless you and be in the midst of everything you do. Everything you do. Everything you do. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to leave you with an inspirational quote of my own that my office fans will appreciate out there. You'll miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky by Michael, Michael Scott. Scott. <laughs> Butt liquor, our prices have never been lower. All right, Favorite Matthew, thank you so much for doing this thank and you, for being Felicia, here. Thank you, I love you. <laughs>